Is it true that we'll starve to death without pesticides? I think we'll kill ourselves with pesticides. <laughs> you know, I'm not worried about in, uh, I'm not worried about us starving. You know, without pesticides. Uh, the pesticides. There's the treadmill effect. People talk about the pesticide treadmill, and it's that you use one pesticide for a certain period of time, then resistance is built among either the diseases or the the pests that you're trying to. Um, deal with, or the science comes out that that was a bad idea and it's having ecological and human effects that we never realized. And so then we're on to the next thing, and then we're on to the next thing, and we're on to the next thing. Why can't we put more time, focus, research, and dollars into organic agriculture? Um, you know, just as one example, the, the amount of research acreage used in the United States for organic research is still less than 0.01% of all research acres in the United States are dedicated to organic practices. So clearly, we're, <laughs> we, everything is skewed in terms of the research, <clears throat> and there are plenty of places in the world that are feeding themselves without pesticides. With those, is there anything else we can do to make a change in the amount of chemicals that are used in the food system? So I think you know, we, we really have to recognize that the health of the soil will be the health of the plant, the health of the livestock, and then the health of the human. And you know, that goes back to Sir Albert Howard. I mean, this is not something new. This is over a century old. And so you know, the, the more we pay attention to soil health, then the closer we get you know, really to eliminating the needs for pesticides and really you know, building upon you know, that, that soil, the you know, capital in all the right sense of the words, and building upon that capital that's there in the soil and you know, really benefiting our lives and certainly the environment in which we live. Don't we need pesticides in modern agricultural systems to grow enough food to feed the world? If we maintain the modern systems that we have, yes, we need pesticides. Are they the right systems? No, they're not the right systems, and they're leading to the detriments, you know, not only of, of soil health and human health and environmental health, the, you know, that system is contributing also to climate change, and I don't mean in a positive way. So if you're maintaining the same kinds of systems and not altering the systems, then sure, you need the pesticides, but, you know, that's not getting us anywhere. Obviously, it's taking us to a place none of us really want to be alone or together. How has the amount of insects in the world changed in the last 75 years, and why should we care? Yeah, so the studies are coming out more and more. They're being put together on a global scale, and it depends on which science you look at, you know, kind of how you aggregate the numbers, but it looks like you know, there's this what some folks have called a mass extinction, you know, potentially underway at this point in time, so that we're losing a, a third or more of the insect populations around the world. And those insect populations are very much um, kind of keystones in terms of, you know, the ecology, because that's, those insects really are what we're dependent upon in so many different ways, that is in terms of um, the natural environment and having a balance there. Because you know, not all insects are bad, that's obviously the case. And so things get out of balance, then very often the pests tend to magnify and we've you know, done a lot of harm to the beneficial insects. So we need to restore that balance. Do chemicals and pesticides destroy soil microbes and other good soil nutrients? And why should we care about this? Yeah, so definitely the pesticides and other chemicals uh, that are there in the soil are certainly having a detrimental e impact on the ecology of the soil food web, as we're beginning to call it. Um, so, you know, it's the same as if we introduce these chemicals and pesticides into our gut, into the biome there, um, and you introduce it into the soil biome, you know, in both cases, you're dealing with things that are named sides. You know, these are the Latin meaning death. And so, you know, it, it, it's not sort of this resurgence of life. It's an effort really, you know, to, to kill things and to do it fairly, you know, not necessarily that discreetly. You know, very often it's sort of this broad spectrum approach, which doesn't do us any good. What concerns do you have about our pollinators dying off and why are they dying? So we should be really concerned about the pollinators. When you look at the food crops you know, around the world that depend upon pollination, um, you know, that is the majority of what we're raising in terms of, of food and crops. And so all of what we're doing in terms of applying pesticides um, is having a really detrimental impact on the pollinators. So certainly we know about the honeybee and the collapse there. 
We also have all of the wild bees and other insects that are out there that are pollinating, you know, and then also in some cases even bird populations um, that contribute. So it's a, um, it's a scary proposition. What are some solutions that can be applied to make today's modern agricultural agriculture more sustainable? So in terms of making modern agriculture more sustainable, I, th I think I'm an educator. So, you know, it's the easy and natural place for me to start, you know, but it really is in, in educating, <clears throat> excuse me, in educating our young people about what it is they're eating, you know, where it came from, how it can be produced, you know, um, you know or organically or by whatever means or, or term we want to use. So I think we have to get that into the school systems. That's, that's a really critical piece for us. Um, but there, there's lots of opportunity, particularly if we can start with soil health and help people understand that it's not just about the soil health, but it's also about carbon sequestration. When we have good organic practices, we're doing two things at once. You know, we're taking better care, we're taking better care of ourselves and the environment, and we're also sequestering carbon. What is regulatory catch-up with regards to the chemical pesticide industry? Right. So I think since we're not really functioning with a precautionary principle right now, that is, you know, we're functioning on the basis of citizens and consumers having to prove the dangers of certain pesticides, then we're having to find our way around and, and usually wait until there's some ill effects that are unfortunately too well documented on ourselves, on the environment, on our pets. And then we realize there's an issue. Then we dig into the science. We try to isolate any single active ingredient, understand what it's doing, even though we're dealing with this you know, massive cocktail in which we live. So we try to home in, figure that out. The science gets done, you know, takes a while, five years, 10 years. Then the policy usually takes five years, 10 years to catch up. Um, so there's no catching up with the pesticide treadmill. You know, we're, that, we're running as hard as we can and um, going backwards at the same time. It's like being that kid on the escalator that can't quite fight the, the current. What influence does the chemical and pesticide industry have over the scientific community? Unfortunately, they found their ways into the, the laboratories and the writings of you know, certain researchers who are out there. Uh, that's been, un well, fortunately, that's been documented. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's not pretty when you start to look at the influence that's there. Um, and they've also taken on, you know, even, for example, IARC, the International Agency on the Research for Cancer, um, you know, and really done everything they can by infiltrating the media to try to dispute the findings of what's really a, a fairly conservative scientific um, community there with IARC. So we need those folks. We need them really to be advocates you know, for human health and not be subverted by the industry.